Praise the Lord. Jesus can you hear me tonight? Uh, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Especially to share with you what God put on my heart. We're living in very exciting times. And Jesus is coming back. Jesus on Let's get ready. Hope you, hope you realize not everyone's going to be ready when he comes. You're going to have to do what you need to do to be ready. I'm going to share with you tonight some of the things you're going to have to do. If you don't Amen. do them, that's your own fault. I'm going to help you. You have the same faith I have. You have the same promises I have. But you've got to use it. Mm. You can have some, don't use it. You have the gift of eternal life. I'm assuming you're born again. <laughs> Not everyone's born again, maybe. And the first gift you receive as a child of God is the privilege to know Him. And that's not like an intellectual knowledge. You can't get to know God using your natural mind. You might listen to this message tonight. Think about it. Analyze it. And maybe even think about some of the scriptures I'm saying. But if you don't experience the pain of conviction, you didn't learn anything. I mean, you, you didn't learn it. It didn't change you. So if you want to check, you can prove that. Look at the fruit in your life afterwards. If you are the same you are tonight and you and you leave the same way, then nothing's changed. And hopefully some things I share tonight will help you. In Matthew 25, we have the story of the wise and the foolish virgins. And the Bible says that they both will fall asleep. And that's the period we're in now. The church is already falling asleep. You've got the wise ones and you've got the foolish ones. And there's a difference. The wise ones are using what they have. And they're getting oil for themselves and they're taking it with them. So they're not, they're learning lessons. You know, we all make mistakes. And we have the grace of God. So that when we make a mistake, we learn from it and we progress. No one's perfect. But you should be learning from your mistakes. The Bible says God's ways are higher than man's ways as the heavens are above the earth. It doesn't matter how much I study. I'm never going to reach those ways. Using my natural carnal mind. I'm going to have to submit myself to God, be honest, look at the fruit in my life, be honest about the anointing of God on my life, but God promises he gives grace to the humble. So if I stay humble in this process, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come on me and it's going to assist me to do whatever I'm supposed to do. You don't need any of your special prayers. You don't need to pray for more anointing, more power on my life. Because I'm humble. And you can be humble too. It's a choice. You don't have to pray any special prayer. You just have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. 
and let him do the rest. Don't take over the Lordship when it gets complicated. When you do that, you are now taking matters into your own hands. And God will resist you. It's a choice. You choose whether God assists you or resists you. <laughs> Don't assume that God is going to assist you, because he's not. You have to meet the conditions. The people in these last days are falling asleep. Because they say God is on our side. And they sing these songs. And they say we have the victory. But look at your life. And see if you do have the victory. If you're listening to God. And you're doing what he says. And you stay humble. You can't lose. God gives grace to the humble. So these two virgins, the wise and the foolish ones. They were mixing. You understand? They were talking. And the wise ones, they were learning from their mistakes. That's why we have the grace of God. And you may have some grace today, but that grace was so you could change. The grace you have now is so that you can grow spiritually. Yes. That you can learn from your mistakes. You have access to God. You have the best teacher living inside you. And he will lead you into all truth. You don't have to listen to these prosperity preachers anymore. My listeners, people say that no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's the very scripture that these false prophets will use against the church in the last days. So you is a lot of the my bad woman can the silver put the last one. Because that's what they're gonna tell you. Because the name is a son of that no weapon is gonna be will prosper against you. But they don't read you the conditions. Gotta read the conditions. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. It's not for everybody. You've got to be a servant of the Lord. How do you know you're a servant of the Lord? Is it because you worship God? You worship God all day here. And the presence of God can come down. What it did with the children of Israel. And they all died. So don't tell me just because God turns up in this meeting that you're a servant of the Lord. Wake up. You better be a servant of the Lord. And that means you hear his voice. And you do instantly what he says. You do not think about it. Thinking is dangerous. Anytime you think about what God is saying, you will disobey him. Because you're going to doubt. It's not going to make any sense to your natural mind. The things of God make no sense to your natural mind. They never do. It's going to appear foolish to you. It's crazy. What's, how's that going to help me? But if you're wise, you don't use your mind for anything. Your mind actually belongs to God. That's what it does. It belongs to Him. And he is the one who's supposed to write things there, put things there. The reason we have all the mental diseases that are coming on this planet right now. It's because people are consulting their mind. You're never supposed to consult your mind. You're never supposed to lean to your understanding. That was not God's design. You were, if you were in a situation, you're just supposed to ask God what to do and he tell you what to do. Is that simple? He is your heavenly father. Is that right? If he is your heavenly father, 
then he is supposed to take care of you. Is that not right? He knows where your next meal is coming from. He knows what, what the devil's doing. He knows the end from the beginning. So then you just trust him. You don't need him to explain anything. He will just tell you what to do and you just believe him. Now that looks foolish in the natural. That when God tells you to do it, you just do it instantly like that. But that's what you do. Because you have your heavenly Father <coughs> who knows everything. And all you need to do is let go and let God. That's it. Amen. So the wise ones are going to be ready. <coughs> and what they're going to do is they are using what they have. And they're actually learning from their mistakes. Like I say, that should encourage you. Because usually we think of the wise ones, they're always perfect. You understand? That they don't make mistakes. Well, that's not what I read. Even Paul said to the church in Rome, they, you know, they, were, doing, they were having some successful missions. This was the darkest place on the face of the earth at that time. This was the center of the Roman Empire. People were living in sin. And here the church was doing well and many were getting saved. They were having success. They were having revival. And what did Paul write to them? He didn't say, oh, you're doing great. He didn't say that. He wrote a long letter. And he spent a lot of time correcting them. And you can go through that letter yourself and examine yourself. In Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, what does he say? He said, in view of God's mercy, make yourself a living sacrifice. That's your logical approach now. Don't be thinking about this, just do it. Just surrender yourself in God's hands. Stop using these methods, in other words. They had their little tracks there, you know, they said the same thing every time. They were not examples, you see. They weren't examples of living sacrifices. They were talking the talk, but not walking the walk. There's a lot of people like that in the church. They can say the right things. They can say Jesus is Lord. They can say Jesus died for you on the cross. But when you look a bit closer, you see they don't have the fruit in the life that the that old nature is dead. But if the old nature is not dead in your life, you didn't really understand the gospel. The grace of God appeared to us all. This is what Paul said to Titus. The grace of God taught us to live godly lives. This is Titus chapter 2 if you want to do your study. It taught us to deny ourselves. And just do what God says. And live righteous lives. In complicated situations. Mm-hmm. So I hope you that's what you're doing. Uh, we know in Matthew chapter 7. This is what's going to happen very soon for all of us. As I said, Jesus is coming. And in Matthew 7, 21, it tells us here, it uh, says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of the Father is in heaven. Well, the kingdom of heaven is a real place. 
He has boundaries, just like Finland. Mm-hmm. You have boundaries. But you've got to make sure you're inside that kingdom that's coming. We call it the kingdom of heaven, okay? The kingdom of heaven is here now. But not many people have really entered that kingdom. But if you listen to these false prophets, these false teachers, they'll tell you we're all in the kingdom of heaven. They say you're born again. Oh, you're a Pentecostal, or you're a charismatic, or you're a Baptist, you're definitely in the kingdom. These are the preachers who are going to make you fall asleep. And when Jesus comes, you then get left behind. Don't blame those preachers. No, you have the Spirit of God in you. And he can tell you the truth. But you don't listen to the Spirit of God. You listen to something that tickles your ears. Not everyone who's born again is in Christ. You understand that? Yes, I know according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. It says that you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Well, that happened on the first day. Because you were a baby, you were helpless. You were in an emergency situation. I've explained this before. It's like anybody, they're stuck out there in the middle of nowhere. And you're in a medical emergency, and they can't get to you. They're going to have to send a helicopter to go and rescue you and bring you to the hospital. Yes. You have that service here, I suppose. We have that in the UK. Now, that is a special service. Somebody pays a lot of money for that service. <laughs> but in the kingdom of God, it's also available. Mm-hmm. And God will come and pick you up wherever you are. And if you humble yourself, even if you're in the deepest, darkest sin, and you ask God to forgive you, and you humble yourself, the Bible promises that God will translate you out of the kingdom of darkness. Now, you've got to admit you're in darkness. I mean, if you don't believe you're in darkness, God can't help you. Well, let me explain it to you. If you're using your natural mind to make decisions, you're already in darkness. I mean, actually, you're offending God. That's what you're doing. If you're using your natural mind to make any decisions, period, you are embarrassing. You are ashamed to Christianity. Uh, because you have the Holy Spirit. You have a connection to God. You have a connection to the very mind of God. The very heart of God. By grace through faith. Pay for on the cross. So the very thoughts of God, the very directions of God. You don't have to guess at what God wants you to do anymore. Now everything in the mind of God can be in your mind. Everything in the heart of God can be in your heart. But you've got to be in the spirit. You've got to deny yourself. You've got to take up your cross. And you've got to follow him. You've got to be a servant of the Lord. Now maybe you don't want to do that. So what you're doing is you're choosing the bits of the Bible that suit you. And some people decide, well, I don't really need to deny myself. Or I don't really need to take up my cross. You understand? Well, because they say, well, that's just for pastors and leaders. That's for every child of God. You don't leave that out. That's the most important part. You must deny yourself. 
Sinun on kierrettävä itsesi. If I was doing a Bible study tonight, jos mä tänä iltana tekisin you know what I would pick? No, mitä mä tekisin? I would go, I'll get that word, deny yourself, and I'll explain it to you. Mä ottaisin sanan, kieltää itsesi, ja mä selittäisin sen. You might feel a bit pale afterwards, but I'll explain it to you. Mä tuntee olevan kaltaa sen jälkeen, mutta... You might not thank me for it. Ettäkö kiittäisin mä siitä. But at least then you know what it means. Mutta ainakin silloin, kun sä kiertäisit, mistä on kyse. Because that doesn't, that doesn't suit you. It, it doesn't make any sense. Se ei myöskään järjestäjä, se ei niinku sovi sinua. All your life you've made the decisions. Koko elämäsi ajan sä oot tehnyt päätä. And the trouble is when you make the decision, you are Lord of your own life. That's what you are. Jos sinä teet päätös, kun teet oman elämäsi Herran. You're as good as the devil. That's about as good as you are. Olet aivan kuin paholainen, ihan samanlainen. And if you keep making this, you're, as, you're a disciple of the devil. That's what you are. Jos jatat päätös, kun teet itse, olet paholaisen opetuslapsen. Now repent. Se parannus. That the kingdom is coming. Valtakunta on tulossa. Kingdom's actually here now. Itse asiassa valtakunta on jo täällä. In case you meet angels, you'll know that. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin tiedät, että valtakunta on jo täällä. Kaikki kuulet ihmisiä, niin is doing the perfect will of God. Not the permissible will of God. You might hear a wrong voice. You might say, well, God allows this, God allows that. And yes, he does. But you've got to listen more carefully. Because what you get in the natural could cost you something in the spiritual. I mean, people who get comfortable forget God. They start to have everything, the bills are paid and they can do what they want. I mean, if you start doing what you want when you want, you are lawless. That's what the Bible describes you. You have no control, no guide. The only guide you have is your brain and your flesh. And you decide what to do when you want, how you want, anyhow. You definitely deserve to spend eternity with the devil. That's his kingdom. That's why he's so popular. You are the devil preachers. You can do what you want when you want. That's his gospel. Now to many that sounds like freedom. You understand? Ah, great! I can do what I want when I want. That's not freedom. That's hell. Freedom is making yourself a bond slave of Jesus Christ. Not even thinking. You believe if you actually know who God is. If you know that Jesus Christ is the Father manifested in the flesh, you know that. Jesus Christus on isä ilmestyneenä lihassa. That he never does anything of himself now. Että hän ei ikinä mitään omasta itsestään käsin. You know, I mean, some people believe that Jesus did miracles with his divine power. They believe that. Uskon, että Jumalallisessa Jumalallisessa voimalla. They try to make out that Jesus hadn't, you know, some special powers. Et yritä sanoa, että Jeesus oli tän erityisiä voimia. That's ridiculous. Se on naurettavaa. We believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Me uskon, että Jeesus Kristus tuli lihaan. That he had no advantage over us. Et hänellä ei ollut mitään voimia. He went through the same difficulties that we go through. Hän meni kaikkien näiden samojen vaikeuksien. You don't believe this stuff, you're already contaminated. Jesus came. He came in the flesh. He denied himself. He, he took up his cross. He had all divine power. And he emptied himself. And he took on the form of a servant. That's what my Bible tells me. And under those conditions, he did not sin. Well, imagine the kind of pressures on him. Not only is he gonna like 
commit himself to God for day to day living. Ei hän ole tarvinnut niin luovuttaa itse asiassa Jumalalle joka päivä. At the end of his life he's going to take on the sin of the whole world. Hän ei ole sen lopussa hän vie vaan ylleen koko maailman synnin. Now, it wasn't an easy thing. Se ei ole mikään helppo juttu. He didn't just die on that cross and say, okay, right, put them on me. There you go. Ei hän ole sen, mä kuulen, että se istuu, että ottakaa sen mun päälle ne. No, he had to qualify to die. He had to be without sin all of his life. Well, that was no problem for Jesus. Because he didn't think. See, thinking is the problem. He just listened to the Father. And when Kuntari Isa, he asked the Father what to do in complicated situations. And the very words that came out of his mouth with the same words that the Father put there. Not one word was different from his, from the Father's lips. Not he said himself, if you've heard me, you've heard my Father. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because the Father and him were one. Well, you can be one with God too. That's not something specially reserved for Jesus Christ. You either represent God or you represent yourself. That's it. Either you're one with God or you're one with the devil. There is no in between. You understand? Don't get any idea that just representing yourself is okay. It's not okay. You better wake up. I'm telling you, the church is falling asleep. And they listen to this false, superficial Christianity that says you can still be Lord of your own life and call Jesus Lord. I'm going to repeat this to you again. Because you're running out of time. You better repent. Matthew 7.21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, enter into the kingdom of heaven but only those who do do doeth the will of the father which is in heaven you're going to have to be determined on this are you finding many people here who actually do the will of the father all the time you might find the odd person who actually does it now and again. You know, it's like they get the special grace of God. Mm. They do something and God anoints them and it works. But they don't do it consistently. Do you understand? Well, I'm seeking the kingdom. So part of me seeking the kingdom is to see if I'm doing that consistently. I don't consult my reasoning. I ask God where I sit. Just before I sat there, I asked God where I should sit there. When you came in here, did you ask God what chair to sit in? No, you didn't. You're not interested about doing the will of God. You just think. You're carnal. I mean, if you want to be carnal, be carnal, but don't act like you're ready. If you want to be spiritual, I mean, do you understand what the word spiritual means? Spiritual means that you get a spiritual input. It doesn't mean you, you use your natural mind in the process. You just listen, the thought comes, it comes from outside of you, or maybe it comes from inside, but if it does, it's coming from the Holy Spirit, bringing it back to your mind. Then when it appears in your mind, you recognize that came from God, didn't come from you. Then you ask the Father, "Is do you want me to do that? 
isälle. Mm. Tarkoitus sinähän tekemään tuolla asia. He sanoo, yes. sano, kyllä. And you, because you know God is faithful. Ja sinä, koska sinä tiedät, että Jumala on uskollinen. And you just want to show him that you love him. Ja tarkoitus osoittaa hänet, että sinä rakastaa. Because you know he loves you. Koska sinä tiedät, että hän rakastaa. So it doesn't matter how hard the command is, you just do it. Ei ole väliä, kuinka vastaan olet käskyt, kun kysyt, sinä vain teet sen. See, if you say you know God. But you do not keep the day-to-day commands of Jesus Christ. You are deceiving yourself. Do you understand that? Because you are. You say you know God. And yet I know you're born again, but that's not enough. You need to know God personally. And it's not something in your head. The problem is what you know in your head is hindering you from knowing what you need to know. You see, what you know in your heart is what you do. You know, faith without works is dead. So if I say I believe, but then I do something else, I don't believe. But I might say, well, I know that doctrine, but you don't do it consistently. So here's the problem now. When God speaks, that's my opportunity. Maybe they don't come along every day, especially in the beginning. Because I was very carnal. And I couldn't hear God very well. I was hearing the devil half the time. And so, you know, I didn't actually get too many commands from God. But then when I started getting them, I started realizing this is the key. This is the answer. I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments now. That put you to sleep as well. Jesus is the one authorized to give you a command. You know why? Because he knows you. And he died for you. And he knows what you go through every day. He knows what level of spirituality you're at. He knows if you're just a baby Christian, just starting out. He also knows where you are now, and so he gives you a command at that level. And it's not too hard for you to do. He makes sure that if you are grade three, then you get a grade three command. Do you understand? He doesn't overload you. It's within the realms of you being able to do it. Now, if you listen to the devil, or you listen to the law, you're going to miss it. Because the law will condemn you. And the devil will also condemn you. Because he's going to take a command way up here. If you don't have the grace to obey, and then he's going to say, now, come on. If you love Jesus, do this. If you try to do it, you can't do it. Because you don't have the grace to do it. <laughs> Same result, condemnation. Now, if you don't like falling under condemnation, then don't listen to the devil and don't listen to the law. Listen to Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say, my sheep hear the law. <laughs> You're supposed to be hearing Jesus and trusting him to put it all together. He's the one who picks what is suited to where you are now. I'm not the one qualified, he is. So what I try to do is help people get to him. Well, if you if you have lost your relationship, Relationship with God. There's only one cause. There's not a hundred things to search. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Yeah. It might not seem like God is loving you right now, but <laughs> but I mean, love comes in different forms. Okay? <laughs> 
Sometimes you need a bit of a spanking. <laughs> There's not many people who do that, so I end up doing it. <laughs> I can take you across my knee and give you a good whacking, okay? No problem. <laughs> But that's because I love you. <laughs> and I'm prepared to confront you by the way you listen to false doctrines. Stop claiming these promises. <laughs> All the promises are yes and may, amen in Christ Jesus. So you better make sure you're in him. Amen. Now, here it tells us in Matthew chapter 7, 22 and 23, it says many people are going to be like this in the last days. The charismatic Pentecostal ministry is going to increase in the last days, okay? But they're still asleep. They're going to be asleep right up to the end. And they're going to be doing great things. And it says here, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, they say, Lord, Lord, have we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name did many wonderful works. And these are, you know, these are Truly born again people now. I can, I can prove it to you. If you want to believe lies and think those are unbelievers, they're not unbelievers. Verse 23. And then it says, Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In some translations it says, those who practice lawlessness. Okay? Lawlessness is doing what you want, when you want. That's lawlessness. So if you're practicing that in your life, day to day, you're in danger of being left behind. Absolutely. You do not want you to be deceived. If you still lord your own life, you are practicing lawlessness. And you're making decisions up here. And you will end up in the most terrible place. And you will hear, depart from me. And Jesus will say to you, I never knew you. That word no means to know somebody in a personal, intimate way. That's not just being born again. That's not just knowing about God. That word means to know somebody in a personal, intimate way. The way like a husband would know a wife. Two people would share from their hearts. Yes. And if you know Jesus, typically you you are able to ask him any question, and he would answer you instantly. Because you know him, you communicate with him all the time. You're not on your cell phone trying to communicate with somebody else. You, you get SMSs from God. I mean, I'm getting messages from God all the time. I can't keep up. I, got, I swallowed a cell phone from God, okay? I swallowed a cell phone from God. It's called the gift of eternal life. I hear him all the time. I have to get up at four o'clock in the morning just to write down what he's telling me. I will not miss his commands. I love his commands. And some of you don't want his commands, you want blessings. You come to me and say, Oh, pray for me, I need a blessing. Okay, if you get your blessing, you get your healing. What's going to happen in your life? If you go out here healed, if you go out here healed, and you do the same sin again, you're going to come back in here about a couple of weeks later, you're going to be as sick as you were last time. What's the point? 
Me nähtiin hieno paremmin, wow, okei hyvä. But you still didn't learn. Mut sä silti ihan oppinut. I don't care about healing. Mä en välitä sitä paremmin. I care about one thing. Mä välitän yhdestä asiasta. Doing the will of God. Jumalan tahdon tekemisestä. And if I'm doing the will of God, then if there's any hindrance for me doing the will of God. Jos mä teen Jumalan tahdon, on jokin este sen välissä. And God chooses to use me, which he doesn't have to. Jos Jumala päättää ja käyttää minua, niin hän ei saa sitä tehdä minua. I'm not claiming to be the best servant around. Ja mä väitän olevan paras valveri täällä luonnon. I realize we're in a race. I intend to win that race. I want to get there. I want to be the one God uses, but He doesn't have to use me. And if I hold sin in my heart or iniquity in my heart, He will not use me. But if He uses me, and there's something in my life, like a sickness, like any hindrances, weaknesses. He can choose to remove it. Hän voi päättää ottaa sen pois. But he can also do something else. Hän voi myös tehdä muuta. He can say, well, no problem. I'll Hän... leave that weakness there. Ei hätää, mä jätän sen heikkoja sinne. And I still do what I want to do through you. Ja siltikin mä teen sen, mitä mä haluan tehdä sun kautta. How about that? In the set. You like that idea? Tykkäätä siitä ideasta. Because when you're weak, you're strong. Koska silloin sä oot heikko, sä oot lähellä. Because then you have to ask God. Koska silloin täytyy silloin pyydyä itseasiassa. You know, people who have, you know, it takes some... 20 minutes longer to get out of bed. Jos jollakin kolla kestää about 20 minuuttia pidempään päästä ulos. Or it takes them half an hour longer to get through the shower and get ready to go out the door. Tai puolta minuuttia enemmän käydä suikussa ja valmistautua lähteä ulos ovesta. Or, you know, if you're blessed. Sä oot silloin autuas. Erika's here. She's looking after three children. She's trying to get everything ready. Erika on siellä. Hän on kolme lasta huolettavana. Hän nyt pääsee kaiken valmiiksi. By the time she gets everything ready, it's, you know, you're looking, my goodness, that's an hour just gone by. Siihen mennessä hän on saanut kaiken valmiiksi. Oi, ei. Tunti on kulunut. But she's blessed. Hän on autuas. Because she's got to ask God. Koska hänen tulee kysyä Jumalaa. And if she's asking God about, you know, where do I put that one, where I put that down there, oh, I mustn't, must forget, mustn't forget that. Et mun pitää ottaa tää tähän ja toi tähän ja Jesus, she's asking the Lord. Now she does it and I'm raising it, it'll take forever. But if she's acknowledging God about those things, she's going to get faster and faster and faster. Now when she asks somebody asks her, how did you do all that stuff? Se on kysyä, että no, mitä sinä kaiken tuon? Where did you go and learn that? Mistä sinä tuon opit? Oh, I learned it listening to God. Oh, it's opit, että kuulet paljon Jumalaa. You can do the same thing. Sinäkin voit tehdä samoin. Don't sit there with your stupid brain running. Älä niin kuin istu siellä, anna sun typerien aivoissa. Ask Jumala. God everything. Vaan kysyä okay. Jumalaa kaikkea. Okay. So, like I said, this is what I do. Näin mä teen. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Sanomassa 3, jake 5 ja 6. If you're not living like this, you're heading for hell. Okay? Jos sinä toivit tällä tavalla, sinä on matkalla helvet. You've got a chance to turn around now. Even if you're born again, you need to be living like this. Now, I'm not forcing you, I'm just telling you the reality. Okay? It says, this is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Now, if you're doing this, no problem. You're going to walk in his paths. And his paths are paths of righteousness. So here's what it says. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. <laughs> so this is not what we do in the Pentecostal movement. At least in my denomination. And I don't think much has changed. I'm a thorn in some people's flesh. You understand? I annoy people. And I'm going to keep annoying them. That's part of my calling. Okay? But I'm dealing with people who are backsliders. I'm dealing with hypocrites. So in the Pentecostal movement, they don't do what that says. When they want God to direct their paths, they just pray. They pray these fine sounding prayers and they say, God direct our paths in Jesus' name, like that. You see? 
ohjaa meidän polkumme Jeesuksen nimessä. We did that for years. Me tehtiin näin vuosien ajan. We do that, I mean, in the Pentecostal church, they still do that. He on tai seurakunnissa tekee edelleen näin. They just learn how to pray for everything. He oppii miten rukoilla kaikista asioista. Well, what prayer does not fix, repentance will fix every time. Mutta se mitä rukous ei kykene korjaamaan, niin parannuksen teko aina pystyy korjaamaan. If you're korjaamaan. doing something contrary to the word of God, you've got a choice. Jos sä teet jotain sellaista, joka on Jumalan sana vastasta, silloin sä on valinta. You can adjust yourself. Uh, you can change yourself. But you can't adjust the word of God. If you're doing something, make sure you adjust what you're doing to fit the word of God, not the other way around. So three things you have to do. Number one, you have to trust God with all your heart. Herran kaikessa sydämessä. Now to do that you have to become like a little child. You don't think. You trust. And you just obey what the Father tells you to do. You're not going to do that if you don't become like a little child. Number two. Numero kaksi, you acknowledge God in all your ways. A double L, all. Kaikilla. That means you ask God what time to go to the toilet. That means you ask God what socks to wear in the morning. You don't know. You don't know. No idea what's going to happen to you today. If you have a confidence in the flesh, you are in danger. You understand? You are going to perish. You're going to get left behind. So if you think that I'm preaching the same message as some other preacher in this country or anywhere else, you are deceiving yourself because I am not. I'm preaching the truth. And those who preach what I preach will tell you to acknowledge God in all your ways. So if you go to any preacher anywhere today and you ask him, do we need to ask God every little thing? You know, do we need to do that? He's going to say, no, you don't need to do that. He's going to say, ah, oh, you've got a brain. You just ask God the big things. And the little things, you just make up your own mind. You just do whatever you want to do. Well, that's not a preacher of righteousness. That's a preacher of lawlessness. That's according to the definition of the word of God. So if you're telling people, use your mind to make this as you are a preacher of lawlessness. Now, if you start preaching righteousness, Righteousness by the Spirit now, not righteousness by the law. I'm trying to get the righteousness of God by faith. Maybe you're not. Paul was trying to get it. He hadn't arrived at it. He was still doing it. You read Philippians chapter 3. Verses 9 to 11. He, te- he says there, you know, I'm pursuing this righteousness by faith. I haven't arrived yet. But I press on. And he was concerned that he didn't have the right kind of righteousness. But he was hoping that when Jesus comes back, that he'll have it all together. He didn't want to be found outside of Christ. He wanted to be found in him. You read what the Bible says now. This is Paul the Apostle. What hope have we got if he couldn't do it? And if he was afraid that he might not be in Christ when Jesus returns, then we should work out our, our salvation in fear and trembling. So I'm not going to assume I'm going to be in him when he comes. I'm going to try and make sure now under the little storms that are coming and I'm praying I'm not like you, you just pray for blessings and miracles and breakthrough 
You're a foolish Christian. That's what you are. But what I'm trying to do, I pray for trials and difficulties. You see, that's my prayer. And I'm asking God to increase them. Because I know if I can get through one storm, and that storm comes, not a big storm, but it's a small one, and it comes, hits me, but I don't get out of Christ. And it passes over me and I'm still standing. It might be, it might be a stressful situation in the home. It might be a financial problem. It might be something to do with the love of the world. These are all storms. And they come along and they test your faith. And if you give in and you consult your mind, you will sin. You will. Amen. So you better not do it. And if that happens, and you do sin, then you repent. You don't just say, oh, I'm sorry. No, you want that storm to come again. And you beg God. You say, ah, God, okay, I'm sorry. And you spend some time with God. You start praying and you start seeking the root of sin. Sin is only a fruit, you, you understand. So you're actually yielding to the flesh. And you're obeying the lust of the flesh and sin manifests. Okay? So that, that's not the end of the story now. That sin wasn't manifest manifesting before you've heard this in 1 John 1 verses 8, 9 and 10 it tells you no one is without sin is that right? well that means that everyone can have sin but it's not manifesting but when that storm comes and you start, the whole building is shaking. Then you start thinking. And you start thinking, what am I going to do? And then you start leaning to your understanding and you sin. Mm. So that's the sin that was in you. It was like at the seed level. It was, it was. It wasn't, it hadn't grown fully. But when the storm came along, you started yielding to the flesh. You didn't trust God. You weren't like a little child. You were starting to reason in your mind. And that came to sin. That's what happens. So now what are you going to do? Just saying you're sorry won't fix anything. You've got to look at that fruit. And you recognize that fruit came from you. It didn't come from God. And you look at it until you feel disgusted with yourself. No pain, no gain. You get what we call godly sorrow. Then that godly sorrow forms in your heart. You've never done this, you're not growing. You're still a baby Christian, okay? Only way sin passes away. It's when you allow that godly sorrow to manifest. And the Bible says, Godly sorrow leadeth us unto repentance. That's 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. So if you want to get from the fruit to the root, you spend time with God. Feel bad. Yes. You're corrected. Yes. And it's not pleasant. Yes. But the end of that road, when you've been exercised by it, that's what it says in Hebrews. 
You know, exercise is tough work. Yeah. How, how, you, how many of you go to the gym? On, on yeah. pull up, Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> But those of you do, <laughs> that's not nice, is it? <laughs> But when you work at that, after a while, you appreciate your body's a bit stronger. <laughs> Well, natural exercise does not compare with spiritual exercise. And it's much tougher. So you're just a lazy believer, and that's what you are. You just listen to these messages, you claim you think the victory belongs to us. You're doing nothing. Että voitko kuulua meille? I need to take you to the gym. Mä vien sinut sinne salille. I need to run you round a course on repentance, okay? Mä vien sinut oikein treeniohjelmaan parannuksen liittyen. I need to sit over you until you repent and hold you down. Mä niin kuin painan sinua alas, kun me sä todella teet parannuksen. I don't have time for that. My wife wants me back next week. Mä olen liian aikaa siihen, kun vaimo haluaa kuin testi kautta. I leave tomorrow, okay? Mä lähden huomenna. So, I'm just telling you, time is running out. <laughs> Now, if you do your spiritual exercise, <laughs> then what's going to happen is that sin is going to pass away. <laughs> And now you're going to have what we call the peaceable fruit of righteousness. <laughs> It's all in the Bible, you know. <laughs> But maybe you don't want to hear this. <laughs> just want something to tickle your ears and tell you something nice in Hebrew. <laughs> You're in danger of hellfire. That's what you are. What you need to hear is what God is telling you to do now. And it's part of a love relationship. So wake up. Because many people are asleep. Now this is what it says in Matthew chapter 7. And this is Matthew's gospel chapter 7. And I'm reading verses 24 to the end. This is Matthew 7. I'm reading verse 24. And verse 24 says, Therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine, And does them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So listen carefully to what Jesus is saying. Because okay? this applies to you and me. Verse 25. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew. And beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. The rock is Christ. But the rock is obedience to Christ. The only reason I have a solid relationship with God is because I don't think I listen to what God's telling you and I just do it. God doesn't have to explain anything to me. He is my heavenly Father. He knows the end from the beginning. So just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. That's my attitude. Okay? So I've met people who've been destroyed. Not everybody has sufficient grace. Do you understand? Some people have just the grace they had of salvation. That's all they've got left. And even that they've used up. They got born again. They got filled with the Spirit. Maybe, maybe they got baptized in those words. And here now they 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 start rejoicing and they're having a great time. But they don't listen to preachers of righteousness. Instead, they listen to preachers of lawlessness. And they listen to these preachers who said, God's given you a brain, he expects you to use it. You don't need to ask God what socks you wear. Just use your mind. 
Those are the mm. false preachers. Now. Now, the false There's so many of them. They're 99% of them in the world today. Okay. You go and check your preacher. Ask him. Confront him. When I first heard this, I took Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I went to my senior pastor in the UK. I went to this church because God told me to go there. Okay? Not, I don't agree with everything in that church, but that's the one God sent me to. Yes? And I read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to the pastor. And I shared with him. I said, the, uh, the scales have dropped off my eyes. I have learned something. We are not supposed to pray for God to direct our paths anymore. I said, God will direct our paths. When we stop leaning to understand, we trust God with all our, with all our hearts. When we acknowledge God in all our ways. And first of all, he did, that was a pretty good message. But then I told him, I said, I'm going to start asking God everything from now on. And now he's getting nervous. He didn't like that. And they took him to see that. Oh, he said, now, brother, be careful now. Be careful. What are you trying to do? Tell me to be careful of the word of God? <laughs> I just read this. And I told him, you're supposed to acknowledge God in all, A double L, all your ways. Maybe you don't know how to do that. But I don't know how to do that either. But I don't care. If God said it, it must be possible. Now you can sit there with your theological degree and tell me what, all the reasons why we can't do that. If you're wasting your own time, you're wasting my time. Because I don't believe God would tell us to do something that's impossible for us to do. Now, if you want to believe in a God like that, go ahead. But if God says it, that settles it. You understand? But maybe you can't do that because you're not like a little child. You need God to explain it to you first. You've got Thomas faith. So God's got to get it down and explain it so that you understand how it all works. You've got to do this first and everything. And finally, when you begin to understand it, you release your faith. Well, I tell you, you're Thomas, that's what you are. And God can make you into an apostle, don't get me wrong now. I mean, after all, Thomas was an apostle. <laughs> God had to work on him a bit, he ended up dying in India. So you might end up doing the same thing. <laughs> But God has better things for you, you see. But we're running out of time. So you, you can learn this now, or you can learn it later. The only problem is if you learn it later, you've got less time to learn it. So this, this is an important point now. Let's say I set a class for you. And I said, in one week you learn this lesson. In two weeks you learn this lesson. In three weeks. Now, if you do that, it's easy. Right? Just do what the teacher says. If you don't recognize, if I'm not saying something what the Spirit is converting, you don't need to do it. It's okay. But if I'm saying something the Spirit confirms it, you've got to obey it. Because you didn't hear from me, you heard from my father. The Spirit confirms the word. 
Now you heard from God, you must obey that. That's where it gets uncomfortable now. Because you've got to bring all your flesh under control. Because your flesh is going to try and talk you out of that. It doesn't make any sense in the natural mind. You're going to have to deny yourself. You're going to have to just do everything you have, you, the flesh is going to be screaming at you. And you're going to find a hundred reasons, or oh, maybe not that many, but five or six. <laughs> I don't like that British guy. I don't like his accent. Don't like his accent. Don't like his you, you, I mean, the devil's going to give you all kinds of reasons why you don't do what I say. <laughs> You're wasting your time being here. <laughs> if I'm not a man of God, why did you even invite me? <laughs> the leadership in this church believes that I'm a man of God, so what about you? And if you think I'm not, then you talk to your leaders, you tell them. Stop being a hypocrite and stop hiding. So I came here tonight to help you. Because time is running out. And I don't know if I'm going to see you again. So, like I said, you're going to have to obey. But if you're learning the lessons God wants you to learn, and you decide, I'll do that later, I'll do that later. <laughs> or maybe something is going to cost you a lot of money or a lot of inconvenience, so you leave that to later. You can't you can make those decisions. You don't have any idea what's coming next. There could be some much more severe lessons. I look back at my spiritual life. I can I can see God made all the right choices, that's for sure. But I didn't accept God's wisdom in the beginning. And I decided, no, we'll leave that to later. Now, looking back, if I had dealt with that issue in the beginning, and done it in God's way, everything else would have been much easier. And the number one thing, number one lesson you're going to have to learn, is you want to be successful in the spiritual life, is you're going to have to make Jesus functional Lord of your life. If you don't get that settled, everything else is going to be messed up. You're wasting your time. You're not building on the apostles' doctrine. You've your own doctrine. You've your own version of Jesus Christ. And it's corrupt. Because you're using your brain. You never use your natural mind to understand the things of God. Never. And I've told you this before. Bible school is the enemy of the true church. It is. It's a work of Satan. Because it's telling people to have a confidence in that intellectual system of learning. And people who go to Bible school say, use your mind. They think that they can understand something in the Word of God. They think can read it. Analyze it with their mind and come out with truth. That is impossible. If you could do that, God lied. And he didn't lie. The only one who can understand the word of God is the one who is humble. Comes to God's word. Doesn't know where to start. Ask God, make sure he's in the spirit. And then says, God, where do I start? What do I do? And the first thing God says to you is, go make yourself a cup of coffee. And you go and do it. Because you don't mind. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So you go and make yourself a cup of coffee, then you ask him, what do you want me to do? 
going to test your heart. You say Lord, Lord, but you he's not Lord of your life. So you go and make that cup of coffee, you come back, and then you say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? Turn to the book of Galatians. And he says, verse, chapter 3. You foolish Galatians. <laughs> Then you get your lesson, okay? <laughs> God likes to get your attention when he wants to speak to you. <laughs> you with that system, you're going to grow up so fast. <laughs> so, it's your choice. You can either be a foolish virgin or a wise virgin. <laughs> so, if you're a foolish one, you're going to get left behind. <laughs> So let's look at Matthew 7 again. They've done one half. We finished at verse 25. Now we're doing Matthew 7, 26. And it says, verse 26 says, And everyone that hears these sayings of mine, and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now, verse 28, 29, they also say that when this, when they came, when he finished speaking, they were astonished, astonished at Jesus' teachings. Then in verse 29, they recognized that when Jesus spoke, he spoke with authority. Not as the religious leaders, I don't apologize for the word of God. If you don't like the word of God, then fine. My, the Bible is my favorite book. And I don't read any other book. The only other books I read is the ones God tells me to read. And he tells me to read it, I read it. And then I ask him, did I learn what I was supposed to learn from that book? Jesus is Lord of my reading. He's Lord of everything. I have to ask permission to do everything. You say too, well, I don't like that idea. You don't like freedom. You're a slave of the devil, that's why. Because anything other than obeying Christ is, is you're trapped. You're in the prison. The only one who can set you free, the only one, is Jesus Christ. And that means you're going to have to listen to him all the time, not some of the time. Because Jesus is the truth. Isn't it? The truth is not following a doctrine. You, you might come along to this meeting and maybe somebody prays to you or gives you a word of knowledge and your life is set free. And when you get free, what are you going to do? I know what most people are going to do. They're going to go back to their former life. They're going to get free. They got their healing. They got their blessing. And then when I see them next time, it's going to be worse than what they were this time. Because they've gone back using their natural mind, being Lord of their own life, and that means that curses are going to increase in their life. You have to choose. You choose between the blessings and the curses. That's it. It's not actually God that curses you. You understand that? I mean, He curses. You know, the God is the one who has the power to curse and power to bless. I've said this before. The devil can't put a curse on your life. All the curses in your life come from disobedience to the word of God. So you choose. If you choose to obey, 
Jos sä päätet totella, trust, luottaa, then it's simple. All the blessings will follow you. Se on yksinkertaisesti. Kaikki siirrokset tulevat sun, sun yllesi. But if you choose to disobey and use your mind, jos sä päätet olla tottelemaan tuolle kärjellä, you're going to disobey God. Guarantee. Niin mä vakuutan, että sä tulet silloin kolman tottelemaan Jumalalla. Soon you take truth, sä otat totuuden, and you pass it through your natural mind. Ja vie se sun luonnollisen mielessä läpi. The printout on the other end is going to be false. Is it true or false? The other side of the coin is going to be true but not truth. It's going to be true but not truth. Something can be true but not true. You know that. Asia voi totta, mutta se ei ole totuus. I've used the illustration before. Mä olen aiemmin käyttänyt vertausta. Great man of God in our country is long gone now. Ja se on meidän suuri jumala mies meidän maasta me joka on nyt kauan sitten. Uh, his name was Arthur Bird. And he was with Arthur Bird. And he's from Wales. And a Wales the cottage. One time I went to see him. He's he's a great man of God. I mean, uh, and a powerful man. <laughs> and you want to you want to and I sat down in his living room. And he, uh, as soon as he saw me come in. And he was sitting just next to me. And he stood here with me. He just took his foot right up in the air like that. <laughs> I mean, this man is like 80 years of age. <laughs> and he takes his foot and he swings it really high in the air. And he lands on the, the, the chair just next to me. And the foot's just right in my face. You understand? I said, thus said the Lord, thou art a foot. <laughs> and he had a message for me that day. It was a good message. But this is the kind of man he was. So watch out for those flying feet coming towards you. <laughs> now, those people were a bit crazy, you see. But when they speak, you know you're hearing from the throne. You know you need to repent. Very few true prophets today. They come to you and they say, oh, nice things. They don't tell you the truth. They don't tell you you have to repent. They say, God's going to bless your life. God's going to give you this. He's putting you to sleep. Don't listen to such people. Look at the fruit in their life. And you see that person. If they're staying in a hotel, which they usually do, I never stay in a hotel. It's a sin for a man of God to stay in a hotel. Well, if you're a man of God, you stay with a faithful person in that city. You are a yes. Mä ajattelin semmoisen uskollisen äh, niin kuin uskovan luokse siinä kaupungissa. Missä yeah, you onkaan. stop paying for hotel rooms, we could really have a good church. We could have a good church. Jos alkaisit maksaa sitä hotellin huoneesta, niin meillä voisi olla hyvä sellainen. You have a lot of money too. Ja se myöskin tota, niin, säästäisi paljon rahaa. Because when you stay in like sometimes very complicated situations, Was that being one of those vähän monimutkaisessa tilanteessa? I've done this in Africa. I've done it in India. Mä olen niin Afrikassa, mä olen niin Indiassa. I've slept on the floor in India. Mä olen rukulun lattialla Indiassa. In the heat. Ja kuumuudessa. I mean, no air conditioner. Ei ilmastoidia. Okay, it's just one night, I know. Okay, it's just one night, I know. Next night, something else is different. Whatever. Yes, we're going to worry about that more though. But that's it. But it's a minute. And people see that and they say, Brother Keith, we see you here. And they see me sweating. I'm rejoicing. I don't need that hotel room. Those false prophets, they need that hotel room. That's how you know they're false. Because when they get to that, those comfortable circumstances, they can do whatever they want. But the one who's truly serving God, the one who's a real servant of God, can rejoice in all, A double L, all circumstances. Doesn't matter what you're going through. You can sleep in a chair, you can sleep on a train, you can sleep on a bus. You can go through any trials or difficulties. You're like all the apostles. You don't care about your circumstances. And you're rejoicing always. So that's a true man of God. So you keep sticking these people in hotels. You're helping yourself to see. 
Jos sä pistät nämä ihmiset sinne hotellihuoneisiin, niin sä autat sitä, että se on itse eksynyt. Never put a man of God in the hotel. Never do it. Älä koskaan laita Jumalan meidän hotellihuoneisiin. Just tell him, there's a place here. You might have to sleep on the floor. Sä voit sanoa, että täällä on myös paikka, jossa voit ehkä joutua nukkumaan lattialla. Or you might give up your bed. I don't mind. Eikä sä huolet oman sängysi. Say, well, you know, I'm not living very comfortably, but this is my bed. This is where I sleep. Mä en elä niin mukavasti, mutta tässä on mun sängysi, niin tässä vaan nukun. Mm. That's the best we have. So far, so good. You might say, "Well, uh, until you put me in a five-star hotel, I'm not coming." No, but sir, no. Any other hotel, you put me in a hotel, you might not pull us. That's fine. Don't oh, come oh. there. I'll sit there. That's his problem. And so, honey, on that. But like I said, this is just the body of Christ now. Come on, so wake up. Just a room. That's here and now. We are family. You yeah. understand? Yeah. If I've got a brother or sister, would I not welcome him to my home? Do we have different levels within the family? Do we have like, do, do we put some people in the family in the hotel and others not? We don't do that. I've got a brother. And if he's coming to town, guess where he's going to stay? I'm going to put my brother in my house. And if he turns around to me and says, "Well, I need a five-star hotel," I say, "Well, you're on your own then." Sorry. I'm not going to do that. I hope he won't do that. But if he wants to do that, he better go and find his five-star hotel. Don't give me the bill either. I have to pay that himself. So wake up, Hera. Some of you are sleeping. So Jesus is Lord. That's the end of the story. Yes, on heaven. Matthew five, six, and seven. Matteus on ollut viisi, kuusi, seitsemän. I mean, that's a teaching from Jesus, okay? Ja Jeesuksen antama opetus. You may not like my teachings. Ehkä te ette tykkää minun opetus. You might think I'm mean and nasty. Ehkä se on vaan ilkeä ja, ja paha ilkinen. I mean, just make sure you put my name, spell my name right. Ehkä vaikuttakaa vaan, että pistätte mun nimen oikein kirjoittaa. Tell all, you know, give that bad report about me and stick ja, it on the internet. Ja ratkaa itse, niin kuin pahoja, pahoja tätä niin, niin kuin raportteja minusta. That way some people might turn out to maybe you just find out how bad I really am. Ja sillä kyllä myötä, niin joku voi tulla mun kouluksi, kun vaan selvittää se, kuinka paha oikeasti olen. And then they listen to my message and realize I am teaching the truth. Ja sitten kuuntele mun sanomaan, että tajua, että oikeasti on meidänkin totuutta. But Jesus is truth. Mutta Jeesus on totuus. I make many mistakes, but Jesus doesn't make mistakes. Mä oon tehnyt virheet, Jeesus ei tee virheet. So if you want a major teaching of Jesus Christ, jos sä oot joku sen ihan pää, I recommend you read Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. Those three chapters. So you can read those. How long is that going to take you? Maybe 30 minutes. That's not a big chunk of your time. You can read it and not understand it. I recommend you prepare yourself You know, set aside a time, ask God. Say, God, I want to hear what you have to say to me. And he's going to give you an appointment. You don't do it at your convenience, you do it at his convenience. Et oman mukavuutes puitteissa vaan, mikä on hänelle kaikkein parasta. Now God is speaking all the time. Jumala puhuu kaiken aikaa. But you do, you need to make an appointment with God. Mutta sinun tulee sinun järjestää sinun niin kuin tapaaminen Jumalan kanssa. My son came to me years ago. Hän on poika, hän on minun luoksi vuosia sitten. And he was in one of my meetings. Hän oli yhdessä mun kokouksissa. And he came under conviction. Hän joutui synnin tuli alle. And he said to me afterwards. Hän sanoi mun jälkeen. He said, I felt really bad after listening to you. Hän sanoi, mä tulin sinun tosi pahaksi, kun mä en puhu sinua. That's a compliment. So I said, "Say it." So afterwards, he said to me, "I've never read the entire Word of God." So I'm not going to. I'm sorry. 
I have not read the entire Bible from beginning to end. En mä koskaan lukenut koko raamattua alusta loppuun. I kind of looked at this bit and that bit, but I never actually read the whole word. Mä vähän katsoin siellä ja täällä, mutta mä en koskaan lukenut koko sitä sanaa. And listening to you, I realize that means there's bits missing in what God can use to speak to me. Ja mä tajusin, että on semmoisia puuttuja osia sen suhteen, mitä Jumala voi mulle puhua. And I want God to use the full counsel of his word to speak to me at any time. Mä haluan, että Jumala käyttää, kun hän saa koko neuvoa. Mulle, so, this is what he said to me. He said, I'm under the conviction and I'm not going to let go. I'm not just going to say sorry. And I'm, I've spent all night and I'm going to say sorry. And I'm going to say sorry. And I'm going to spend all night praying. And he knocked on the door in the morning. And he said, Dad, I'm, I want you to help me now. Because on one side I'm convicted, on the other side I'm excited. And on one side I'm convicted, on the other side I'm excited. Synnitun alla, mutta sitten taas toisessa on niin jännittävä. Mä en ole koskaan lukenut Jumalan sanaa. I have got an alert, an allergy to hard study. Mulla on niinku allergia, että kovaa opiskelua kohtaan. Most people have this problem when you're young. You don't study. Monilla nuorilla on tämä ongelma. They want something for nothing. You've got to study. Sun täytyy opiskella. And so he said to me, honestly, I find it hard to concentrate, hard, hard to study. He had this problem when he was doing his exams, you see. And, and so he wasted a lot of time. He spent quite a bit of his time with his girlfriend at the time. And he came to me at that time as well. And he said to me the same same sort of thing. He said, I've wasted my time, I haven't studied. But dad, I've got a problem. I'm coming up to the exams. And I'm afraid. If I, if I go into that exam room, I'm going to fail. I use up all the time. Wasted it with my girlfriend. I'm talking, it really was not godly, okay? And he came to my office. And he said, Dad, I know you hear God. There's no question. He said, I'm asking you a, a, a favor now. Would you tell me what's going to come up in the exam? I said, no problem. I'll ask my father, see what he has to say. Mä kysyn isältäni, että katsotaan mitä hän sanoo. It's none of my business if God wants to do something. Ei se ole minun asiaan, jos Jumala voi tehdä tämmöistä. If it was me, se olisi minä, in my pentecostal righteousness, mun helun tai vanhuskaudessani, I would have said, you wicked son. Mä sanoin sinä, paha poika. You wasted your time with your girlfriend. Sinä tuhdat aikaisen työttömyyttä. You didn't study. Et opiskelu. The Bible says you reap what you sow. Ja Raamattu sanoi sinä, Niitä se, mitä I could have found at least three or four verses I could have laid on him. But if I did that, the same standard that I use on him would be on me. And you choose. If you want mercy, you better give it. So I, I turned to my son and I said, okay, I'll just ask the Father. I closed my eyes for just a few I said, Father, what do you want to say to my son? You know what the Father said to me? Just tell him all that's going to come up in the exam. What do I know about that? Mitä mä tiedän siitä? Like he said, you tell him what's going to come up in the exam. Hän sanoi, kerro sinä hänelle. I didn't know what's going to. I didn't even know the subject. He was talking. Mr. Ayers and I were talking. Mr. Ayers. Instantly, as soon as I agree with what God commanded, he had to come on. Or he's someone in the same class with the Jumala son. Just like Adam. I mean, I mean, God. He made all the animals. And he was like the animals. He was like this. I agree to tell him what's going to come on the exam. He told me that about that. Even though that knowledge was not in my head, you understand? Not there. I just opened my mouth, my mouth, my mouth suuri, and God filled it. You want to it. And he just reeled off all the questions. They said, I wrote them down. He's a very wise man. He's passed easy. Now, I'm just telling you, that is what God can do. We're not working with rules, guys. We're working by grace through faith. God can make the exception. You want to make that point, Joshua? We're not working with rules. Make, 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 make
Like I asked them, okay. but if you get grace, armor, don't use it as an occasion to the flesh. You only get chances like this once in a while. So my son went away, and he dedicated his life to God at that point. You he knew where the answers came from. Now he's in the ministry now. He's and he's training in the ministry under his dad. And I'm not nice with him, you know? <laughs> well, I am, okay. But I'm, I'm just saying, this is, a, this is great. Yeah. Oh, but it's God who's doing it, not me. If it was me, I would have, I would have used my Pentecostal righteousness. So praise God for not using Pentecostal righteousness. <laughs> There's only one right thing to do. Ask on do what he says. Yeah. So we don't do anything of ourselves. We just say, Father, what do you do? And the Father says, do this. And then his will is being done on earth. And that means I am also part of the kingdom of heaven. So I don't know about you, but I'm in. Now, if Jesus came back now, I would go, okay? I have no doubt about that. But it doesn't mean that tomorrow, I would go. Okay, right now, Jesus came. I'm doing the will of the Father. I'm doing exactly what He's saying. I'm speaking what He's telling me to speak. I came here tonight because God told me to come here. But what about tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to Copenhagen. And what about if I get up and I have to get up early in the morning? In fact, I think we've got to get up about 4 a.m. Is that right? <laughs> so I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Then I get I get to the airport. Maybe they cancel the flight. Oh, what do I do now? So I, I get in the flesh. Let's say I get in the flesh. I I've, I've had these experiences. <laughs> don't get in the flesh. But it could be. I can't guarantee. Every day brings another trial. Just when you got it all running smoothly and it's all fitting and nicely flowing. God comes along, not the devil. It's God who comes along and messes up your nice, comfortable system. <laughs> Don't get the devil and God confused now. <laughs> the devil wants you to go to sleep. <laughs> he wants you to lie down. He wants you to do what you want, when you want, and feel good. And just think you're going to make it to heaven. And you don't have to like pursue righteousness. You don't have to do that. You know what the lies you hear today in the church? They tell you they were all righteous. But the Bible says a hundred times you're supposed to seek righteousness. What's that mean? That means you're praying for trials and difficulties. You want, you're asking God to send you difficult circumstances. This is the only way you're going to seek righteousness. You don't seek righteousness by reading your Bible or something like that. If you do that, you'll never be righteous. So you ask God for a trial or difficulty, comes into your life, it's not going to be more than you can handle. No. Because God promises, He will not try you beyond what you're able to endure. So now here's a new situation with new rules, new new parameters. Maybe, maybe there's something annoying you. 
Remember when David was going somewhere and there was this man throwing stones at him? Do you what you're praying for is somebody to throw stones at you. That's what you're praying for. <laughs> so this is what you're going to pray for tonight. God, please send me somebody to throw stones at you. Amen. <laughs> And then there was a couple of the mighty men there. <laughs> and they're riding along. They say, David, look. You know that guy up there? He's so understandable. <laughs> I, I, I can just go up there and cut his head off and bring it back to you. <laughs> David said, no, leave him alone. <laughs> he may be from God. <laughs> he may be a servant from God. Don't touch him. <laughs> this is David. The one you think so great, but you don't follow his example. Repent. You've got to start following men of God, not people who are like soft and squidgy. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> you know, we've got to be men and women of God. <laughs> so we need these storms. Now I want to end with this because we're running out of time. I love the teachings of Jesus. Very simple. Now I suggest you read Matthew 5, Matthew 6 and Matthew 7. Okay? When my son came to me and he said I've never read the Bible. So he said Dad God told me tonight. That I'm supposed to read the word of God in three months. Now, my son is growing fast. Okay. Well, maybe not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> he's growing at the rate we got in set for him. Okay? But he comes to the word. And he says, God has told me. That he wants me to read the Bible in three months. Now, you know, my son, like I said, it's got an allergy to hard study and he'll tell you. And in the natural, that wasn't looking very easy. But I knew it was under conviction. And he said to me, Dad, I'm excited. Because I know I've never read the entire word of God today. I know God wants me to read in three months. And I said to him, do you realize how many chapters you're going to have to read? <laughs> yeah, I know. But God told me. He said, Dad, I want you to confirm it. <laughs> I just prayed my, I closed my eyes just for a few seconds. <laughs> and the Spirit of God came upon me and confirmed that what he just told me was the truth. I said, go do it. And he can tell you. He sat down and he could not stop reading the word of God. He said it was like a, yeah, God gave him a supernatural ability to concentrate on the word of God. It was easy. He said he couldn't put the Bible down. And he read it in three months, no problem. Now that's a testimony. Which is God doing the work, not man doing the work. So that's the way I work. I do nothing until God tells me. But when he tells me, I put my full faith in that, I yield all my members. Anything here, 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 here that resists, if it's my feelings, my emotions, my opinions, whatever it gets in the way of doing what God said, it's got to die. Because whatever God says can be done. And if I won't do it, you go to somebody else who will. And I don't want to be a castaway. 
Hapataan yllätyksiä. So let's end up with one more scripture tonight. Hapataan yksi raamattu kohta. In the middle of this teaching now. Matthew 5:67. Matteuksen 5:67 on lukee opetuksen keskellä. Jesus said. Jesus sanoo. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Etsikää ensin Jumalan valtakunnan. And his righteousness. Ja hänen valtakuntansa. This is what Paul was doing. Ne Paavali teki. He was doing it in complicated situations. Teki se vaikeissa olosuhteissa. He wasn't doing it by reading the law. Eikä hän sitä as I said, he was praying for trials and difficulties. And where other people would compromise, he listened to God and just did what God said. He was trying to please men. He was trying to please God. So you may be in a similar situation every day. In fact, God is the one training you, not me. I might be annoying, but God's good, okay? So Matthew 6, verse 33. <laughs> Is how you should be living. Yeah. Every day, there is an opportunity for you to seek righteousness. And especially when somebody's being annoying, or it's difficult to obey, that's a very good situation. Yeah. And make no excuses. Everything you do to obey God and show Him that you love Him, you have to do. Do with a smile on your face. You have to do it in joy. You have to do it with the right motive and the right attitude. And not for any selfish gain. So you learn all these things. If you're seeking righteousness and you're seeking his kingdom. Now if you do it right, the fruit of that is this. All the things you need will be provided. That's pretty good, isn't it? Now, again, the fruit of that is this. If I'm seeking righteousness and he's providing everything I need, even in this world where this war is, remember this world's passing away. By next year, we could have a terrible situation in the European Union. Financial collapse is on the edge. We're on the edge. Maybe you don't realize this. It's not long before we don't have a currency or anything. Banks are going to disappear. I'm not prophesying. I'm just telling you. This war is passing away. Okay. So you better get Matthew 6, verse 33 working. Because the only one who's going to survive what's coming is the ones who are doers of the word, not hearers. Remember, you, you can hear something, it goes in one ear, it goes out the other. Nothing in the middle, you know. Some people are like that. You see. They don't listen. Matthew 6, verse 33. If you actually do two things, those two things, God provides everything. You don't need to pray for blessings. You don't need to ask the special man of God to pray for you to increase everything. In fact, if a prophet comes to you next time, ask him to pray for God to take away things, okay? What? You didn't hear that. I said, pray for the prophet to pray things away out of your life. You don't need. Because if God is God, he will replace that and give you something better. You don't need those old things. If you're in Christ, all things are passing away. New things are coming. Amen. Do you believe that or not? Or you rely on the prophet telling you something you need is more. You don't need more, you need less. Get rid of the things that you're trusting in. Then your faith can be in God. And 
And then God will provide. Ja Jumala pitää huolta. So if you're going to seek righteousness, Eli jos etsit vanhuskautta, don't help God. Älä auta Jumala. Just do what he says. Vaan tee aikaa, mitä hän sanoo. So this is what you're going to do now. Ja näin se voisi toimia. So don't be praying for more. Pray for less. Älä rukoile saadaksi enemmän, vaan vähemmän. Because that's going to enable you to trust God. Ja näin sä kykeet luottamaan Jumala. And that's going to please him. Ja se tulee mielettömän hän. Because God, you cannot please God without faith. Mm-hmm. So if my faith is in God alone, it's not in my faith, not in a financial regular income that comes in from somebody. A man was supporting me financially. He's sending his money in monthly to me. He's living in sin. And I confronted him. And I told him, I don't want your money. Mm-hmm. Your money is filthy. Repent. Mm-hmm. So he went away and repented. He didn't send me the money. <laughs> I'm glad for that. And God sent me something better. I'm not afraid to tell you where you're sinning. Mm-hmm. I don't serve money. Mm-hmm. I serve God. Mm-hmm. My job is to tell you what God wants me to tell you. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeking righteousness. And if I'm seeking righteousness, I'm not going to receive money or things from people who are living in sin. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be clean. I don't want Judas Iscariot's money. So you've got to clean up your life. You can't clean up somebody else's life, you can clean up your own. So make sure you do this. So the is to say if you do this right, then God is going to provide for your needs. <laughs> not your wants, not your desires. <laughs> he will provide what you actually need. <laughs> and you'll be in situations like I find myself in very often. <laughs> God provides things at the last minute. <laughs> That's fine. God, God can do things that I've made. That's his. My job is just to concentrate on him. Okay. I leave you with that thought tonight. I pray that you will read Matthew 5, 6 and 7. Get in the spirit. Read those verses there. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor. Jesus said, "All the that are that a poor person is blessed, because they have to trust God. Because they have to trust God. They have to ask God where the next thing is coming from. So just read it and allow the Holy Spirit to tell you what you need to work on now. His kingdom's coming." What you need to do is here and find out what you need to work on now. So, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time together. We've definitely heard your word tonight. And you've been speaking very clearly. And it's a strong message. But you're calling us to repent. And that's good. So because if we can repent now, we're not going to take all this disgusting sin with us. We're going to lay it down. We're going to lay that sin down. And we're going to clean up and be ready for your appeal. Father, I pray tonight that those who come to this place that they will teach on repentance. This need, your people need to hear about repentance. They need to understand repentance is good. They need to like conviction. They need to love correction. This is what we need. Jesus, you're coming. And your people need to be ready. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you.
ja Facebookissa myöskin Armovirta Facebook ja sitten Ake ja Kirsi Toivola, eli meidän henkilökohtainen Ake ja Kirsi Toivola. No siellä voi kuunnella uudestaan, mm. <laughs> niin se menee henkeen. Se on hyvä, kun kuuntelee uudestaan, niin se menee uudestaan, ja se menee niin syvälle, se tulee todella sinne henkeen ja se tulee pysyväksi. Ja sitten äh, hänellä on paljon näitä todella upeita opetuskirjoja, he voivat sitten esitellä varmaan näitä. Mm. Joo, haluatte te esitellä. Tänään meillä on muutamia uusia kirjoja, mitä ei pitää olla silloin, kun oitetaan. En edelleen kiitä vielä, niin, niin tota, mä voisin näitä aikaa. Mm. Ensin on tämä kirja, kun minulla on paljon kirjoja, mitä hän niin, on vuoden 2021 versio siitä, joka oli kirjoittanut Joseph Hedgekin viimeinen kirja, mikä hän sai valmis muutaman kuukauden sinne poistunut herran luokse. Tämä on täysin uudistu versio sitä alkuperäistä kirjasta, joka oli sen eka kirjansa. Tässä on paljon uusia uh, lukuja, mutta se sanoma on pysynyt edelleen samaa. Tässä on uusi järjestys, uusi rakenne, paljon enemmän raamatun kohtia. Asiat on tuotu selkeämmin esille. Eli vaikka te olette lukenut alkuperäisen kirjan tai omistaisin, voin kyllä suositella lämpöistä, että tämä on täysin uuden käännetty myös suomeksi. Ja tätä löytyy täällä uh, pöydälle. Ja sitten lisäksi löytyy, jos olette koskaan tätä herää aikaa loppumassa sarjaa, Tähän törmännyt, niin tämä on aika aikaisen sanoma seurakunnalle siitä, kuinka meidän tulee saada meidän suuren Jumalan kunkaan. Se, se lähtee, tämä ykkösosa, mikä on, mikä on me kädessä tässä, niin puhuu paljon ihan niistä perustusasioista. Eli kuinka oppii nauttia Jumalan läsnäolosta ja pysyä siellä ja kuinka tehdä parannus synnistä ja, ja tuota, kuinka kuulla Herraa olla hänen johdotuksessa. Mutta perusasioita on paljon tässäkin myös hyviä, hyviä käytännön neuvoja. Ne on kakkosa siitä, joka menee vähän syvemmälle. Tämä on aika väkevä, tässä on paljon, paljon vahvoja sanomia. Puhutaan muun muassa ajattelusta, saatanan ansoista, niistä eroon pääsemisestä, englannista kasvusta ja, ja tota niin, mennään sydämelle siinä parannuksen teemassa myöskin. Ja sitten uuteenpäin meillä on täällä osa kolme myös suomen kielellä. Englannin aikuisuus, joka päättää tämän sarjan. Ja on ihan sellainen peili, jonka kanssa voidaan katsoa, että missä vaiheessa me ollaan. Ollaanko me, vastaako meidän elämä sitä niin kuin aikuisuuden mittapuuden, mitä on Jumalan sanasta esitetty ja Joseph Hedgeson käsittää paljon kuvailee sitä, että minkälaisen aikuisuuden kristillinen tulee olla. Mutta myös antaa neuvoja siihen, että miten me voidaan päästä sellaisessa paikassa. Mm. Sitten meillä on, tota, meillä on tässä kirja Kullattu vankila. Tämä on hyvä opetuskirja siitä, kuinka saatana haluaa saada meidän elämän näyttämään mukavaa ulkoa päin. Mutta sisäisesti me voidaan silti olla sidottuja ja voidaan vankilassa. Jopa sellaisessa vankilassa, jossa me itse ei ole tietoisia. Ja tämä kirja kertoo teille sellaisia esimerkkejä. Mutta myös kertoo avaimia siihen, miten voidaan päästä niistä vankiloista vapaaksi. Ja tässä kirjasta on tullut äh, lähivuosina myös uusilta päivänä, mutta se on nyt tällä hetkellä vain englanniksi. Jos te englantia ymmärrätte, niin suosittelen tätä kirjaa. Tämä on uudistettu versio, pidempi, selkeämpi ja vielä niin kuin, vähän menee syvemmälle tähän aiheeseen. Tämä on myös paljon englannin kielellä, mutta alkuperäinen versio suomessa. Sitten meillä on tota, äh, täällä kirja, kuinka rakkaus kasvaa. Tämä on lyhyt ja ytimekäs, mutta todella hyvä opetus siitä, kuinka me voidaan tehdä sitä myös kiittämään puhua, eli etsiä Jumalaa, saada näitä käskyjä ja tehdä niitä oikeista motiivista käsin, rakkaudet käsin. Ja sitä kautta se meidän rakkausuuden Jumalaan lähtee syvemmän. Nyt meillä on täällä kirja, joka on myös suomeksi ilmestynyt, Jumalan poikien ilmestyminen. Tämä puhuu siitä, kuinka me voidaan olla valmiita Jeesuksen toiseen tulemiseen. Kuinka meistä voi tulla sellaisia käyttökelpoisia asioita Jumalan huoneessa, miten Jumala voi valmistaa meitä, kouluttaa meitä. Tai jotain enemmän kuin vain raamattu koulu. Tässä puhutaan Jumalan koulusta, joka on jotain sellaista, mikä on sun ja Jumalan välillä. Jumala alkaa puhua sulle ja viedä sua läpi sellaisten koulun, että hän on niin kuin mittatilauskoja laittanut sun elämää varten. Hän on suunnitellut sua varten ja hän on valmistaa sua siihen tehtävään, joka sulla on näiden viimeisen aikana. Tämä video on hyvin, siinä on monia eri lukuja eri aiheista, mutta siinä on paljon niin käydellinen neuvoa, miten ne voidaan valmistautua näihin viimeisiä päivinä. Ja sitten vielä viimeisenä esittelen tästä kolme erityistä todistajaa. Tämä on myös kasvukirjainen, 
ja puhuu siitä, kuinka me voidaan olla varmoja siitä, että kuullaan oikea ääni. Mm. Koska maailmassa on kolme ääntä, on saadaan ääni, vihan ääni ja Jumalan ääni. Mm. Ja tänään, tässä kerrotaan, että isä, poika ja pyhä henki, kaikki kolme voi todistaa, että se mitä me ollaan kuultu on todella kuin Jumalasta, mm. että meillä olisi usko tehdä sen mukaan, mitä hän sanoo. Amen. 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 Amen.